Mechazoo is a homage to 90s platformers, and as soon as you're in this world, you're reminded of that famous blue mammal we all know and love. Terry the Wombat! But wait, maybe Mechazoo is better than Sonic the Hedgehog? Just maybe? Let's see if this absurd claim stands up to scrutiny. Mechazoo is a game with a great first impression. It falls over itself to propel you forward, to get you to the fun bits. So much so that it kind of forgets to explain what the hell is going on. You think, wait, how did I get here? And in the time it's taken you to complete that thought, you've been shot out of three different cannons. But I love that. It has so much energy, so much forward momentum. It teeters on the edge of chaos, but always keeps control, somehow. Sonic, meanwhile, always had a nasty habit of flowing badly. Boring slow bit, easy fast bit to remind you you can go fast, horrible underwater bit. I like Sonic, but wow, fucking chemical plant, man. So I've gone back to the very start of the game, just to show you how exhilarating it is to start off with. Um, well, once I've just found out where I am, there I am. So at the moment, all I can be is this one creature, but later on I'll be, I'll be able to be several different kinds. So I'm just shooting around the place. Oh, I'm just, I'm just going. I really am just going at the moment. <laughs> I cannot be stopped. I'm just down through here. This is very Sonic already. Uh, just use my special zappy speeder thing so I can go a bit faster. Very Sonic dash. Oh god, uh, bouncing between all that down here. Where you can see no night zone. And oh bloody up through there. And off we go down a little spiral thing. Up we go. Right. Oh no, that's a bad. That's a bad thing. And suddenly there are bad things. Okay, round there. That's more like it. Sometimes the red stuff is hard to tell that it is actually bad. It just suddenly think you suddenly realise. Oh, <laughs> ow, ow! Thankfully, there are reasonably good amounts of checkpoints. Although later on, it starts to be a bit less generous with them. Oh, that's that's quite straightforward. Yeah, nice and easy. Round here, through here, and emerge. Oh, skipped a little bit there, and through here. Open that. <laughs> what am I doing? <sighs> oh, bloody hell. Right into the camera. Through here. Through some circuitry. Shout out to Bedlam. Oh, through here. And zap. And let's just go over here. <laughs> oh, a sonic doop de loop. Oh, bloody hell. Okay, sometimes it's a bit difficult. You've got to. Okay, change direction. There we go. That's more like it. It's a bit difficult to wrap your head around some of the movements. So it's supposed to be all about flow, but just occasionally it's a bit. It just takes a while to get used to, basically. Oh, God. Sonic! Of course, Mechazoo soon gets tougher than its first ten minutes of carefree whizzing about. And then it begins to flow less well. Partly because there's more ways to die, partly because the level hubs are big and confusing, but also because of the core mechanism of the game. Mechazoo is wrapped around the idea that you can swap between characters with different abilities. It's been done before in games such as Trine, there's even multiplayer co-op. Oh wait, what's this? Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric from 2014 has instant character swaps? In Mechazoo, it's done with flow in mind. You're not supposed to sit there and wonder which character is best here, you have to make the decision on the fly, often whilst in mid-air. It's exciting. Your first character is a speedy Sonic clone, but then you're given the keys to a frog. The frog hops about shitly, but he can use his tongue as a ninja rope. He excels in the air, instead of the ground. And there's more animals as you go, although it only ever gives you two to swap between at any one time. Right, so this is a special stage, and where I've got some to survive as long as possible, I think. I could be the kangaroo or the toad. Oh, spikes! These are one of those levels where you have to actually go back, a bit Metroidvania-like, you have to go back to earlier places, um, and then suddenly um, you can actually do these things with the new skills that you've learned. In this case, the, the fact that I can access the kangaroo. Down. Oh, more spikes. More spikes. Uh, oh, here we go. Left. Ah! Oh no, there's a thing! Oh. These are always really tough, these levels. However, this is all well and good to start with. But the game needs to increase the difficulty, and it often deals with this in a very sonic way. It forces you to slow down. And, and because this is a modern game with infinite lives, it also gives you sections where you kinda have to die. Learn why you died, then not do that. 
both these things create rather large speed bumps. And there's some dicky camera work and unfair deaths, but nothing game breaking. Come on, Skippy. Get up there! Tong! Oh, bloody hell. Go on, round, round. Swing. Across. And boing! Right, we need to get a bit more. Boing! There we go. In fact, let's just go straight across here. Oh, hello, Mr. Spider. And there we go. Right, okay, so let's go up in the. Uh, uh, oh! Come on. Oh! F bloody, bloody thing. Oh! Oh, these bloody wall jumpings. Ugh, not always easy. Right. Just, best thing to do is just hammer the button. Oh, what the. What? Hang on, give us a chance! Hang on. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, quick! Quick! Nope! Oh, oh, bloody hell! That does not make it easy. Intriguingly, some bits of the level are best done with one of the characters you've got, but it's often done so that it's a preference, not a demand. You may have noticed in the Let's Play bits of this review that the environment changes depending on who you're playing. The frog can use the round things to tong itself into the air, but if you're the bug, the round things become cannons. Or for the kangaroo, bouncy platforms. Neat! So the gameplay is fairly slick, trying to dodge the design stuff that tripped up Sonic. But after a brilliant eccentric start, it does settle down for the long haul, with familiar platforming stuff, albeit with character swaps. So I guess it's a good time to examine that stalwart of Sonic-type games. Going back to old Sonic games, one thing that struck me is the bosses, which I found quite tricky as a child, were actually often horribly simple and easy. Some could be defeated in, like, ten seconds. Mechazoos are tougher, without being a chore. There's no 20 minute bullet sponges here, thank you! But I kind of found them pedestrian, and defeated often by luck as much as skill. Although the actual graphic design of the things are often great, especially the bear. So this boss is called the Bouncer. Uh, yeah, it's a kangaroo, and if you defeat it, you can become a kangaroo. And this is how that game works. <laughs> oh no, he's killed me already. Right, okay, let's get rid of some of the bombs. Although I've, I've just disappeared. Oh, I'm over on the left! Oh, actually, the, the level's changing. Oh, God! That's confusing. Right, okay, get rid of him. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. Got him. Uh, I think. Have I won? Oh, no. Oh, yes, I have. Yes, there we go. Ha! <sighs> Sonic's bosses may have been simplistic, but they did stick in the mind more than here. And maybe that's a wider point about the two games in general. So, the music's appropriately driving and exciting, but not that memorable. And the character designs are fun and clever, but not that engaging. The bosses use mechanisms we've seen many times and are tough without really making you think. So, is this game too slick for its own good? Has it polished off too many rough edges? It's weird, I really enjoy this game, and I do recommend it, but I don't feel I was ever truly balls deep in the world it had created. I don't honestly feel driven to go back and find the secrets I missed, even though each level's end screen has an exhaustive list of optional goals for you to go back and do. Well, I say optional, you have to achieve certain things on each level, collect a certain amount of cogs to unlock later levels, so sometimes you really do have to go back. Mechazoo is not as good as Sonic the Hedgehog, if you ignore 90% of Sonic games, because after the classic era, most of them were pump. So, hang on, if we take all the games and average out the scores, Mechazoo is better than Sonic? Oh shit, didn't see that one coming. Anyway, subscribe to Randomized User to find out about the most interesting new indie games, and please check out my Patreon if you want to help the channel get better. Uh, thanks for watching, you!